Welcome everyone, this is the Nixon Off-Road Crew doing another installation. This time we're replacing out two components. We are replacing out this OEM front fender and the OEM inner fender liners. And we're going to be replacing them with our brand new Nixon Off-Road front fender with our inner liner fenders here as well. These are stylish, high wheel clearance, uh, powder coated metal designs, corrosion resistance, it offers full protection from everything underneath and uh, let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is go underneath the stock OEM front fender to remove this plastic inner liner. There are four bolts that we're going to need to remove uh, to get this thing off. There's also one other point where we have to remove a clip. Now you can just use a tool here to notch this off with a bit of pressure. The other four bolts should be quickly removed with a tool. We can now go ahead and uh, with a bit of force remove the OEM front fender with that plastic uh, inner liner. Be very careful of the next step as we need to remove this electric connector for the front fender lights. So first we detach it from the top and then we go ahead and unclip it. Make sure the little red tab in the back is flicked in the back position and then you can easily detach both sides. Now why was this so hard to get off? This is due to these little white clips. They're one time use only, easy to get, and there are 11 of them that you're going to need to remove to, uh, to get this thing off. Now it is a painstaking process to remove these manually and here's how it's done. You're going to need to get some pliers, you're going to tension from the front as you release the clip from the back. Now you could take the time to remove all of these. Uh, or you could pull it off like we did, end up at the same spot a whole lot quicker and ready to move on with your installation. Now on the workbench here we have two front fender lights. The right one is the OEM light and the one on the left is an aftermarket front fender light. Now as you can see they both have the same bracket attachments which makes it super handy to attach them with our included brackets. For our purposes though, we're going to stick with the aftermarket light, so uh, let's get started on attaching it. Grab your screws, we're going to start with the top bracket. Once we've got that one tightened in place, we'll move to the lower bracket. We can now carefully and gently place this light into the front fender. Take your time with this. Once it's in place, there are three points that we need to secure to attach it. We're now going to attach the OEM side lamp into the front fender using the same original OEM screw. We then need to reattach the electric clip that provides power to the side lamp and just by clipping it back into the main set of clips here. We're almost done preparing the front fender. Last step, we just need to insert this rubber strip for a tighter seal for the fender against the Jeep body. All right, we're almost ready to put that fender flare on the Jeep. Now, before we do that, you want to prepare the underside here for the inner aligner because we have all this space available to us right now. But once we put that fender flare on, we're going to lose all this access. So the next step to get ready for your inner liner is we need to create a couple of attachment points that aren't there right now. This one's already on, this one is not. So we need to get both of these holes ready because we're going to be attaching our inner liner to these points. Two ways to do that, you can either use this 8mm by 1.25 thread tapper or you can use this bracket. 
Now the difference here, this one makes a thread, this one already has a thread, you'll just be locking it into place. Keep in mind you'll likely have to ensure that both of these holes have the right threading on your Jeep. Take your time to align the thread tapper as close as possible to 90 degrees so that the screw is inserted straight and true. With everything ready and prepared, we can go ahead and carefully place that brand new front fender on the brackets. There are seven points to attach the front fender, five along the frame and two on the white brackets. Start by securing the top brackets first and then move on to the others. Now you will be working with some tight spaces. Initially you'll be able to use your fingers to uh, position that nut in the back and get it all screwed in. Eventually though you're going to need a pair of pliers to securely attach all the points. Make sure all the points are aligned perfectly. You might need an extra set of hands lifting the fender just to make sure this is the case. There's one more screw to secure right here in this bracket. We left the screws loose for final adjustments and now we're going to go ahead and finish this off by tightening them all down. Next step is to reattach the electric clip for the front fender lights back into its original placement. And don't forget to uh, lock that little red tab. It's a good idea to use some zip ties to clean up your electric cables because once the inner liner is on, we're going to lose access to all this space. We're almost sorted on the front fender now, we just need to install this last metal piece to protect all the wiring in the back. There's three points you're going to need to secure here. That beautiful front fender is now installed. Let's move on. So we just wrapped up the installation of our front fender, but now we have a pretty large exposed area underneath uh, that we need to protect. And we're gonna do that with our brand new Nixon Off-Road Inner Liners. These are powder-coated steel design. Uh, and if you just joined our video, welcome. Let's get into it. We're going back underneath the front fender to carefully install the first of our inner liner protective plates. Take your included screws and uh, go ahead and secure the first two points right here. You'll need to use one hand to tension the plate into place and the other to insert the screws. The next point to secure can be a bit tricky as you'll need to pre-place a nut in a rather tight spot. With that attachment point ready, we can now go ahead and install the second plate and carefully, carefully lock it into place on that top bracket. Take your time here, make sure it's aligned perfectly. You only want to do this once. We're about ready to secure the second plate into place, but keep in mind that two of the attachment points do overlap on the, on the other plate, and then the other two attachment points simply connect from the bottom. We're going to initially leave all of these screws loose to give us ample time to check all the adjustments, to check all the placements, make sure it's all aligned. Only then will we tighten everything down. And we are done with both the front fender flare and the front inner liner. Hopefully it wasn't too rough. Awesome work everyone. And that completes our installation. We have our new Nixon Off-Road front fender and front inner liner perfectly set on the Jeep and it's looking beautiful. Uh, so it's going to take the average person about two to three hours to complete this installation for both components on both sides. Take your time. Uh, it is recommended to have two people. The most important thing though is follow the order correctly because some of these steps can only be completed at a certain point. Have fun guys. Enjoy it. 
Uh, you're going to learn. 